Welcome to Bible Stories, where we delve into captivating themes and narratives from the scriptures. Today, we explore a compelling topic, polygamy in the Bible. Have you ever pondered why polygamy was sanctioned in the Old Testament? Join us as we uncover the historical and cultural context surrounding this practice and its alignment with God's design for marriage. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share your thoughts in the comments. Let's spread the wisdom of scripture together with your church group, family, and friends. God's law mandated that every king refrain from multiplying wives so their hearts wouldn't stray from him. However, Solomon disregarded this command and married over 700 women. Consequently, Solomon's heart drifted from God due to the negative influence of his numerous wives. Have you ever questioned why men in the Old Testament took multiple wives? Has anyone argued that God permitted polygamy because it was customary in ancient times? If so, you should watch this entire video to comprehend the historical reasons behind polygamy. Today, we delve into polygamy in both the Old and New Testaments, exploring its origins in biblical and human history. We'll discuss why God tolerated this practice in the Old Testament. Polygamy refers to the marriage of one person to multiple spouses, either one man with multiple wives or one woman with multiple husbands. The first recorded instance of polygamy in the Bible is in Genesis 4, when Lamech took two wives. Lamech, a descendant of Cain, possibly introduced polygamy around 400 years after Cain. Before Lamech's time, marriage was likely monogamous, following God's original plan from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden up to the era of Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, mentioned in Genesis chapter 5. By Genesis chapter 6, the earth was densely populated with descendants of Seth and possibly Cain, leading to increased promiscuity, fornication, and sexual immorality, alongside a turning away from God. Therefore, it appears that the custom of having multiple wives began to solidify during the time of Noah's sons. Polygamy experienced a resurgence among the descendants of Noah after the flood, particularly among the descendants of Ham, who fathered the Canaanites inhabiting Canaan. These Canaanite nations were infamous for their indulgent cult practices, feasts involving orgies, and immoral behavior. Polygamous unions persisted among various nations and continued into the periods of Abraham, the Israelite kings, and beyond. Abraham, a prominent figure in biblical history, practiced polygamy, as seen in Genesis chapter 16 and 25. This tradition was also followed by his grandsons Esau and Jacob, as mentioned in Genesis 28. During the time of the Israelite judges, the well-known Gideon was also polygamous, as detailed in Judges chapter 8. Even Samuel's father during this era had two wives, Hannah and Peninnah, as described in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Throughout the monarchy, many kings engaged in polygamy, notably King David, who had multiple wives and concubines, and King Solomon, who famously had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Importantly, Mosaic law did not forbid polygamy, instead, it regulated it. If a man took a second wife, he was required to continue providing for his first wife's needs and conjugal rights. This regulation aimed to protect the rights and honor of wives and their children while discouraging the creation of additional households. From a legal standpoint, polygamy did not violate the commandment against adultery, adultery was understood as taking another man's wife, not having more than one legitimate wife. In ancient times, God allowed for the practice of polygamy to a certain extent because it was deeply ingrained in the culture and he did not immediately abolish it. Instead, he established laws to mitigate injustices and ensure that those involved in such unions were not harmed. The Old Testament, particularly Deuteronomy chapter 21, does not explicitly clarify the reasons for this tolerance. God's authorization or tolerance of polygamy spurs further examination into the potential rationale within the context of that era. Polygamy was often driven by various incentives. For example, kings frequently entered into polygamous unions to cement political alliances, as seen in King Solomon's marriages with Pharaoh's daughter and King Ahab's union with Princess Jezebel. Another common motive for polygamy was the aspiration for more male heirs, especially during times marked by frequent wars and high mortality rates. Having more sons was advantageous for the perpetuation of family lines. Moreover, the issue of offspring sometimes prompted men to take additional wives if the first was unable to bear children. Additionally, emotional or passionate reasons occasionally led individuals to marry multiple partners. The historical gender disparity, particularly due to casualties in wars, may have also contributed to the acceptance of polygamy. Furthermore, in ancient societies, unmarried women often lacked access to education and employment, relying entirely on their families for sustenance. This societal dynamic likely influenced the prevalence of polygamy, offering women security and support within a family structure. 
For many women in ancient times, the alternatives to being in a household with a man who had multiple wives were often limited to prostitution or slavery. While polygamy was not an ideal situation, living in such a household could be perceived as a more stable choice compared to these alternatives. Contrary to popular belief, polygamy was not necessarily deemed immoral within the cultural context of the time. Polygamous husbands were expected to provide equally for all their wives, ensuring the welfare of each wife as they did for the first. Polygamy stemmed from human failings driven by desires, conflicts, wars, and a thirst for power. Historical discrimination against women, who were often marginalized in social and political spheres, also contributed to the prevalence of polygamous relationships. God's tolerance of polygamy in the Old Testament can be interpreted as a means of safeguarding the lives and dignity of some women in challenging circumstances. Despite this tolerance, polygamous marriages often led to conflicts among the wives. Throughout the Bible, we encounter examples where polygamy caused significant family strife. For instance, Sarah, Abraham's wife, faced challenges when she suggested that Abraham have a child with her servant Hagar in an attempt to secure an heir. This decision reflected a lack of faith in God's promise to grant Sarah a child despite her age and infertility. Similarly, Isaac and Rebekah, parents of Esau and Jacob, encountered difficulties with Esau's wives. Jacob's story also illustrates the complexities arising from his preference for his beloved wife Rachel over Leah, who felt neglected despite bearing four sons. These narratives highlight the challenges inherent in polygamous relationships as depicted in the Bible. Competition and conflict among Jacob's wives resulted in disagreements, including disputes over marital relations with their husband. Other stories in the Bible, such as those involving Elkanah's wives and Solomon's wives, also illustrate the challenges and negative outcomes associated with polygamy. These instances demonstrate how this practice often led to strife and spiritual waywardness, causing women to turn away from the true God and towards the worship of false gods. It's important to recognize that polygamy was not commanded or endorsed by God as part of his standard, rather, it was a cultural choice influenced by inherited traditions and the norms of that era. With the transition from the Old Covenant established through Moses to the New Covenant brought by Jesus Christ, there was a shift in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The new guideline is clear, each man should have one wife, and vice versa. It's essential to understand that many of the commandments related to polygamy in the Old Covenant, such as those found in Deuteronomy chapter 21, are no longer applicable today. If all Old Testament laws were still binding, we would be practicing rituals like animal sacrifices for sin atonement, observing Jewish festivals, implementing capital punishment for sorcerers and adulterers, adhering strictly to Jewish tithing rules, observing the Sabbath, and performing circumcision, among others. However, this does not mean that polygamy is permitted in the New Testament or in contemporary times. Although some kings of Israel, like David and Solomon, had multiple wives, this allowance was a result of the Israelites' desire to have a king modeled after the customs of other nations, rather than being a divine endorsement of polygamy. Under the New Covenant, when the Israelites chose an earthly king, they turned away from direct leadership under the Lord. As a consequence, God granted them the king they desired, bestowing upon him various rights, privileges, and authority over the Hebrew people. In the Christian context, polygamy does not receive divine approval, as emphasized in the first letter to the Corinthians. It states that due to immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. Engaging in marriage with multiple partners, known as polygamy, can lead to acts of fornication, prostitution, and adultery. In light of this, the Apostle Paul clearly advises to avoid fornication by emphasizing that each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband, thereby reinforcing disapproval of polygamy. Paul also instructs Christian leaders that bishops must be blameless, the husband of one wife, demonstrating vigilance, sobriety, good behavior, and readiness to teach. Likewise, deacons must be husbands of one wife, managing their children and households well. Therefore, it is essential for bishops to be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, orderly, hospitable, and able to teach. The ideal form of marriage established by God is monogamous. Initially recognizing that it was not good for man to be alone, the Lord God decided to create a suitable helper for him. Following this purpose, God presented to Adam the perfect model of marriage based on love and partnership between man and woman. Adam acknowledged this harmony, saying, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and joins his wife, and they become one flesh. It is undeniable that monogamous marriage is the ideal model instituted by God for mankind. 
Although humanity has often deviated from this divine purpose throughout history, our Lord Jesus reaffirmed Adam's words in his Gospel, emphasizing the truth of monogamous marriage as recorded in Mark. In the beginning of creation, God created the male and female. As a result, a man leaves his parents and is united with his wife, and the two become one flesh. Therefore, they are no longer two individuals but one united entity. Jesus emphasized the sanctity of this union by stating that what God has joined together, no human should separate. This study of scripture has helped clarify the divine design for marriage established by God. Feel free to share this message on your social media platforms to spread the word of God. I hope you found this enlightening. Leave your thoughts on the video in the comments. May God bless you. Jesus will return, so be prepared and ready to meet him. If you haven't yet, take this opportunity to repent. Find a quiet place, speak to God, and he will listen to you. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey through the pages of the Bible as we've explored the topic of polygamy. We've discovered how God's tolerance of this practice in ancient times was a response to human complexities and cultural norms. Remember to subscribe to Bible Stories for more enriching discussions. Hit the like button if you found this video valuable and share it with your church group, family, and friends. Together, let's deepen our understanding of Scripture and share its timeless wisdom with others. Until next time, may God bless you abundantly.